Hi, my name is Tyler. In this video, I'm going to be showing how to make good 3D views. In this video, we're going to be doing isometric views. I'll be doing another one on perspective views. So when you're going to go to make a good 3D view, uh, you need to start with a point, a reason, a story. Why are you making the 3D view? Why are you using up valuable sheet space for it? Are you trying to show that something fits? Are you trying to show that something does not fit and the architect needs to give you more room? Are you trying to show uh, how nicely the pipes are all routed around and what a good job you did? Uh, you should start your, uh, your effort with an idea of what you're actually doing, what the point is, not just, I wanna do it because it'll look cool um, or because my boss told me to or because I saw this YouTube video on it. So. For this one, we've got a large uh, sort of industrial mechanical plant space and uh, what I want to do is I want to show how nicely all these pipes are laid out here and how accessible everything in this area here is. I think these are boilers or something. I'm not actually familiar with this project, but. Um, so having decided that, uh, what you want to do is you want to decide if you want to use uh, what in Revit speak is the default 3D view or the camera view. And the difference is default 3D view, that's isometric. Camera view, that's going to be perspective. Um, as a refresher on what that is, perspective, default 3D view, or I'm sorry, perspective, which is the camera view, um, things have vanishing points. They recede into the distance. Isometric, they don't. These lines are parallel. Uh, one of the main differences that you need to know about going in is that in Revit, you can tag things in the default 3D view. You cannot tag things in the camera view. Okay, so I've decided I want to make a default 3D view. So I just click that button and this is part of it. Uh, you just get a big mess. Um, there's lots of things going on and it's going to be quite difficult to uh, kind of sort things out. Like the architect has this big block, I can't even see anything. So part, one of the first things you have to do is sort of clean things up and figure out where you're at and get 3D view sort of constrained. Let's do a couple of things. First, we wanna make sure that our discipline is set to coordination. It's gonna make things shade nicely the way we want to. Then we should go make sure that the view style is set to shaded. Right now it's set to hidden line. That's very computationally intensive. Revit's gonna to have to think real, real hard about it. So do shaded. And we're gonna to go to uh, fine in a second, uh, but just now since there's so much stuff going on, I want to uh, get my view shrunk down before we do that. So first I'm gonna go into visibility graphics, VG, annotation categories. I'm gonna turn off just about everything except for section boxes. Mm, that's probably gonna be it. I'm going to go to Revit links, I've only got these two turned on right now, that's fine. Um, and model views, I happen to know that these blobs are uh, sight elements. Something having to do with crane spaces or something like that. So I'm gonna uncheck sight so that those go away. And now I'm left with a bit cleaner something. There's still some what are these? I'm uh, I'm hitting tab and then clicking that to see what it is. It's, a, it's the field of view of a security device. So I'm gonna go back into visibility graphics and I'm gonna turn off security devices. Didn't do anything. Oh, generic models. Right, that's better. So now, currently this view is showing everything um, and it's this huge space. We're just interested in that little boiler room. So uh, what we want to do next is uh, get this constrained uh, so that we just zoom in on that little boiler room. So go over into the properties, check section box, and there it is. It's huge. Uh, if you don't see it, it's because in visibility graphics and annotation categories, you unchecked section box. Make sure that's checked. Um, okay. So I'm gonna to go to the top and I'm gonna get this much closer to the building so I can work with it. Boom, boom. Oops, take the right. Undo 
that. Zoom in a little bit. And let's see how we're doing in elevation. Not bad. All right, so little trick to get the section box um, precisely where you want it is to open up. Let's see, close that one, minimize that one. Um, go into the 3D view and click the section box, select it. Then go into a plan and the section box will be visible. It's not visible until you select it in the 3D view and then come over here to the plan view. Neat, huh? So then you can tighten this up a lot more uh, and a lot more accurately in the plan view. So go ahead and do that. Get it closer. 3D views, um, it's definitely not a science, it is an art. Um, so it's kind of whatever looks good to you. All right, and now we can also rotate this. So I'm gonna hit R space bar, then I'm gonna hit space bar again. Uh, and space bar again means my next click is going to set the center point of the axis of rotation. So I'm gonna click there to set it. And then I'm gonna click once more to do that. And then I'm gonna move it and click it again. So I've moved it 10.01 degrees and now I've made um, that section box parallel to the actual building so it'll it won't have a weird angle to it uh, and now this is already looking much more interesting um, uh, it's kind of a nice cutaway we can see the cooling towers is actually kind of cool I might actually change my mind just for the purpose of discussion and show how cool this is um, okay, so we've got this uh, a bit smaller now. It's We can go ahead and click this over to find to see what those pipes look like a little bit more clear. Um, let's do that. All right, let's see what we've got here. All right, well, let's, um, let's do what I was originally going to do and constrain a little bit. Uh, so the next thing you want to do, so if you want to get the, uh, the height really precise, uh, you can just go into this. Uh, this view like this. You could also go into a section view of the space. Uh, yep, section view of the space. And do the same thing. You can click on the section box in your 3D view. Uh, come over here to the section and you can see uh, you can see the section box in there. So then you can trim it to whatever you want. Let's see. Yeah, I think this is the view we were going to do. Okay. Uh, let's do that. Let's do that. Okay. Don't need that anymore. Don't need that anymore. I think I'm going to go with this view right here. We'll say that this tells the story that I'm looking to tell. Okay. And um, so the next step here, now that I'm happy with sort of how this is oriented, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here. They changed the look of it on me. Um, temporary view show. Oh, there we go. Un, uh, we're going to click this little house with a padlock on it. Yeah, save orientation and lock view. Renew. Oh, um, I need to name it something else. Uh, we're going to call it um, um, Cool 3D View for Tutorial. I don't recommend you name yours that. Um, and now it's locked. I'm I'm attempting to rotate and it's not rotating but I can still zoom in and pan around and now is when we get into deciding what we want to show and not show and how we want to show it so this this already looks pretty good but um, because I already started the theme of picking on electrical if for example we wanted to not show electrical which um, is a dangerous thing to do to start not showing other disciplines but let's say if you wanted to you could go in and in the filters and turn off cable trays um, you could turn off, looks like we have some strange floating railings. Um, sometimes there are things floating just because someone didn't do a good job of modeling or there are just some weird artifacts floating around in space. 
uh, and you might want to turn those off. You can also turn things off uh, individually. So for example, let's say I didn't want whatever the heck this is to show. I can, uh, I can uh, <clears throat> tab select it. So that means I'm hitting tab and then left clicking and right click and I can say hide and view elements and boom, it's gone. And what are these things? I don't know what these things are. Mechanical sensors, I'm sure that's important. Some of the model, but I'm gonna hide it in this 3D view because I don't wanna see it. Um, so you can go through and do that. Bollards, let's keep those, those sound important. Um, and then another thing you can do is you can ghost certain elements. So let's say that I don't like the fact that this a uh, big duct is uh, obscuring things, even though it's not obscuring a whole lot, but let's just say it is. Um, I can override graphics and view by element, and then I could come in here and give it some kind of surface transparency. So, you know, I could crank it up really high and it's, it's quite transparent. I could bring it back low. It's a little bit like that. Um, and I can change um, all of these other, um, uh, graphic settings for this as well. So I've made that a little, a little ghosted. Let's say I wanted to do that over, over here for, for this one and this one. You could override, uh, over graphics and view. Now let's say I want to do it by category. Um, this is, I assume this is going to do it for, uh, all pipes. Let's see. Yeah, so I made just made all pipes somewhat, somewhat transparent. So this can be really nice uh, for things like uh, walls. So if you had a 3D view where you had a wall right here, right in the middle, and it obscured a lot, you could select that and make it half tone, and see the things on the other side of it. That could be quite nice. Um, okay, so go through and do all of that, clean it up, make it look nice. Um, Let's make the let's make it look a little nicer in terms of graphics. So go into uh, properties window, graphics display options, click edit. Um, you can play with uh, realistic. See what that looks like. That's quite dark, so we're not going to use that for this one. We're going to go back to shade. Sh um, going to go back to shaded. Um, hit apply on that. Uh, so for shadows, you should use uh, show ambient shadows. Now watch what happens when you click that. It sort of adds, uh, it just sort of adds shadows. It's a, it's a cheap, um, it's a cheap shadow trick. It's not realistic, but it kind of makes things look, look more realistic. I don't recommend you use cast shadows um, unless what you're trying to do is show, tell a story about how the angle of the sun and you have that all set up it just kind of makes it look busy and weird and it's showing sun shining into the second floor and that's not realistic. So probably you want to leave cast shadows unchecked. Um, that's the thing you can play with. This is where you could play with the sun settings if you wanted to do that. Um, we won't mess with the background and you do want to add silhouettes that actually uh, makes a nice makes a nice touch. So we want something that's kind of bold, maybe medium bold. So let's pick that one. And um, you won't be able to see it because I had a thin line on, I believe. Let's see. Okay, so what Silhouette did is it, it makes, um, it makes uh, lines that are silhouetted a bit darker. It uses a bolder line for them. Um, okay, so those are some quick settings to make that look a little nicer. And uh, now we're ready to annotate. Um, so that works just as it does in um, um, in any other view, except you have to go into visibility graphics and annotation categories and turn your tags on. So let's see, I'm gonna be doing mechanical equipment tags and probably pipe tags. Turn those on, okay. So TG for tag, um, you know, click things, 
tag them. Use good um, drafting principles for that. Don't just willy-nilly tag things all over. This is where it pays to spend a lot of time making these look good, look nice, be sensical, um, and not just be randomly tagging things because you think they need to be tagged. If something's not relevant to the story you're trying to tell in a view, maybe don't tag it. Maybe it's not important. In this view, there's a lot going on. I don't need to tag every single thing. Maybe it's just good to know that, hey, this big pipe over here, that's hot water supply. And uh, this big green monster over here, well, it's, it's kind of, maybe go like this. That guy, that's the condenser water supply. And this one is the return. And then just by looking at the fact that the other ones are connected, people can kind of figure it out. These aren't the floor plans. These aren't what people are going to be doing takeoffs and buildings from. These are sort of to help people get an overall sense of what's going on in the design. So you don't need to dump all of the information at them. You need to dump the information that is relevant to what's going on. So tag conscientiously. Another thing uh, that some people, uh, I think, don't understand that they can do because these are engineering documents is just add explanatory text using plain English. So I really like the curved leader line. So maybe, you know, put something in here and say um, access corridor for equipment removal and just point that out. And of course, again, I turn text off. Um, you know, maybe maybe it's nice to point out that these are nice big red boxes. You know, whatever is important to the story you're trying to tell, um, do that. Call it out with English. You know, you don't have to use a bunch of acronyms and other stuff. You can just kind of explain what's going on there, tell a story about it. That'll go a long way. It's not actually against the rules to use plain English to describe what's going on on engineering documents. Um, the people reading them will appreciate it. Okay, so uh, one more thing to do here is to crop the view. So hit crop view and make that region visible. And uh, smooch it up a little bit. And then, oh, we didn't uh, we didn't place this in my project browser. Let's do that. Um, working views. You should do this for wherever it makes sense. Um, per your office's, um, you know, standards. It probably goes to mechanical sheet views somewhere, but I'm just making a tutorial. So uh, let's find a sheet. There it is. Okay. So I've got a new sheet. Um, we'll name it a uh, mechanical level two uh, boiler room plans. Uh, let's just pretend that we had a sheet that was set up and everyone agreed this was a great place to put 3D views. Uh, just click and drag over onto it and click it there. Now, if you if that size isn't the way you want, uh, it's just a scale thing. Change the scale. Um, make it huge, just make it the star of the show uh, if you want. Um, or one to, one to 100 seemed to be kind of nice. So maybe we'll just leave that and put it up there. Uh, give it a title, 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 title scale. Um, I don't understand, oh, there it is. And then the last thing you might want to do is go in here and go into visibility graphics, go to annotation categories, go to section boxes, uh, make them not visible. It will still exist. It just won't be visible anymore. And then uh, you might also want to make the crop region not visible. And you go in here. Whoa. And there you have it. That's how to make an isometric view in Revit and place it on a sheet and some tips and tricks on how to make it look good. That's it. I'm done. Boom.
Oh, bonus feature. Uh, if you want to uh, make a um, uh, an image out of this, it's easy. Go to File, Export, Images and Animations, Image, uh, Current Window. It's good. You can say you can fit to you know however many pixels, horizontal. So go to like 1080, uh, 1080 something like that. It might be nice to make it really big and then you can shrink it down to increase the resolution of it. Uh, tell it to go wherever it makes sense for you um, and hit OK. And then go find it. Um, let me know if you see it before I do. Maybe it's not here. Oh, here it is. Boom. So that's kind of, it's not very, the resolution's kind of crappy. So let's go back in here, file, export, animations, image. JPEG, me, we'll go PNG, shaded views. And I'm going to go, I'm just going to go nuts. 3,000 pixels, baby. VR. Uh, image. Okay. YVR image. Yeah, it's a little nicer. You can play with that. Um, have you look? And then you can take this, you can put it on a report, you could put it on a website, you could do whatever you want with it. That's a nice way to get images from Revit and not just using like screen capture. All right, that concludes the, um, <clears throat> what is this? That concludes the tutorial. Yeah, thanks for watching.